What is going on guys and welcome to a new video. In this video I want to talk a little bit more about my first custom built 5 inch drone. It's also my first 5 inch and yeah obviously the top plate is missing but that's because I can show you a little bit better what's inside. In my previous video you can see it's made in flight. It went pretty good. After that flight I wasn't able to fly a lot because it it keeps raining in the Netherlands. It's it's ridiculous. Uh, luckily I was able to squeeze in a few small sessions, mainly doing some tests, doing some tuning. So don't worry, you don't have to look at my face the whole time. I will also put in some nice flying shots. And before I get forget, please bear in mind that I'm also still a newbie and the most of the parts I got was just because people said they had to choose these or I read some good reviews about them. So let's start with the frame I chose and why I chose it. I went for the Armaten Badger DJI edition. The reason I chose this frame is because it's easy to get uh, where I live. Um, which I like because if I crush it or I, have to, or I need some spare parts, I can just uh, order it and have it delivered the next day. Of course, the frame is actually designed for the previous air unit, which is a little bit bigger, so it would fit. And also the description stated that the props or the frame wouldn't be in view. Of course, that's with the previous air unit. So I had to come up with something to make it work with a little bit bigger camera from the O3 unit. But I was seeing some people online who were able to modify the, the camera cage a bit so there wouldn't be any uh, standoffs or props in view. And I really wanted this because I'm planning not to fly this with a GoPro anytime soon. So I want to use the footage straight from the O3. And I personally don't really like to have these uh, rotating things in the in the frame. And I also don't like the look of these shiny bars on the side of the camera. So uh, when I got it, I started puzzling around and when I built the frame as it was intended, I found out that it wasn't able to fit the O3 unit inside uh, or at least the, the camera because these, um, uh, the room between these two standoffs is just, was too small. And then I found that if I switch these two standoffs or, or parts, that as you can see, it's it goes wider and when when you uh, mount it as it is intended, let me switch it, then it goes narrower. But when you do it like this, it goes wider. And then I was able to fit the camera right inside. So um, plenty of room, still maintaining the protection when you have uh, impact from the front. Of course, I had to fill up the extra room with a spacer. I just used two bolts. Uh, which works fine. If you're also planning to do this, don't forget to use a little bit longer screw so um, it, it keeps its uh, strength. I was really happy that I was able to make it work like this. Um, all right, next thing. The flight controller, I went for a stack. This is the Speedy B F7 V3 uh, with the, uh, which one is this? The 50 amps BL32 stack. Oh my God, the, these names, they have to come up with something else because uh, I just can't, can't handle these names, guys. Probably way overkill for this build, but um, I read about it and it's it stated this is very feature rich. Uh, there's a lot of connectors, so if you want to hook up a um, GPS or something or LED, you can just use the connectors. I don't have these, so um, but I really like the fact that I'm able to connect to the flight controller via the SpeedyB app. It's just like the desktop version of Betaflight, so I can just tune and adjust some settings on the location without bringing a laptop. As 
can see it is, uh, has a nice uh, glazed finish. That's because I applied conformal coating to it. Um, like I said, I live in the Netherlands. It rains a lot, so there's always some water somewhere. A puddle, wet grass, mud, uh, you name it. So it's very likely that when it crashes, um, it will be a little bit moist. So uh, I applied conformal coating, so it won't fry that easily. So what's next? Let's go to the motors. Um, I went for the Emax Eco 2 motors. This is the 1900 kV version. Uh, I fly a 6S battery, so I could choose between the 700, 1750 and the 1900 kV versions. Uh, I just chose 1900 because a uh, higher number is uh, better, right? For the props, I use the HQ V2S. Um, not for a particular reason. I just read an article about the best props for your FPV build. And these seem to be uh, pretty nice. When I crash the drone, I like to use a beeper. So I installed a beeper inside. This is the Vifly um, Finder Mini. It's, um, it is an active beeper, so when I crash it or when I crash the drone and the battery pops off or it goes empty, the beeper still keeps uh, beeping with an interval because it has a little battery uh, inside and it will keep beeping for a few hours after, uh, after disconnecting the battery, uh, which is very nice and handy. It also has a nice uh, LED inside, so I think that's it for the build and the parts I used. Hopefully we can fly this thing soon again, but the weather gets a little bit warmer and I can finally start ripping it. So for now, thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.